welcome back to science. I'm going to be showing you a video in just a minute. So I want to make sure that everybody's ready to roll. Uh, all right, go ahead and watch the video. No matter where on earth you go, living things are connected to each other. From the tiniest of organisms to the largest of creatures, all living things need energy to survive. So where does that energy come from? Well, matter and energy passes from one organism to another, connecting living things like links in a chain, a food chain. Of course, a food chain is not an actual chain. It's a way to talk about the relationships between organisms and show how matter and energy flow between living things. Every living thing on Earth is part of a food chain, including you, and most things are part of more than one. All of the energy in Earth's food chains comes from the sun. The sun's energy reaches the Earth as light and heat and plants capture some of it and convert it into food through photosynthesis. Because plants make or produce their own food from the sun's energy, they are called producers. Every food chain must begin with a producer, for example, grass. That's because animals cannot create their own food. They must eat or consume energy from other sources. That's why animals are called consumers. The second link in a food chain is a consumer that eats plants, an herbivore. When an animal eats plants, some of the energy the plant captured from the sun is transferred into the animal's body, where it is used for things like moving, breathing, and growing. An herbivore is called a primary consumer. Primary means first, because an animal eating plants is the first consumer in the food chain. Let's add a rabbit to our food chain. Next comes a secondary consumer, the second consumer in the food chain. This consumer is a carnivore and gets their energy by eating other animals. Maybe our rabbit will be eaten by a fox. When the fox eats the rabbit, part of the energy that the rabbit got from the grass is transferred to the fox. This is the end of this simple food chain. The rabbit eats the grass, then the fox eats the rabbit. The energy that came from the sun, captured by the grass, transferred to the rabbit, and then transferred to the fox. Some food chains are longer than this one, but there can't be too many links in a food chain. Each animal in the food chain uses up a lot of the energy from the previous level instead of passing it on, meaning that only about 10% of the energy consumed by an animal will be passed on to the next level. Let's take a look at a longer food chain that also begins with grass. This time, let's make our primary consumer a grasshopper. The grasshopper eats the grass and then gets eaten by a secondary consumer a bluebird. Then the bluebird gets eaten by a tertiary, or third level consumer, a snake. The snake is eaten in turn by an owl. The owl is the apex predator in this food chain. Apex predators are not hunted and eaten by any animals. We say that they are at the top of the food chain. You probably recognize a lot of apex predators, like lion, sharks, eagles, and crocodiles. Just because they don't get eaten doesn't mean that they don't contribute to the food chain, however. When an animal dies, their body is broken down by decomposers. Decomposers are usually bacteria and fungi that break down dead plants and animals into nutrients in the soil that in turn help the plants at the beginning of the food chain to grow. It's the circle of life. Natural ecosystems usually have more complicated food chains, however. A network of interconnected food chains is called a food web. The arrows are used to show which direction the energy flows and help keep track of the connection.
connection between organisms. Now that you understand a little bit more about food chains, see if you can find the connection between living things around you. So, here's what you have. You were given two papers. Mine is colored because I printed mine at home. I have a printer at home. It, it's not necessarily hard to print. It just gets to be expensive, right? Because you have to buy the paper, you have to buy the ink. It can be pretty expensive. All right, so I have a clover, I have grasses, and I have grains. So this is what you're going to do. You have all these food web cards that are all these different animals or things. You're going to first start three chains. One of them is going to start with a clover, one of them is going to start with grasses, and one is going to start with grains. So first off, this is what you're going to do. You're going to start with clover, you're going to start with grasses, and you're gonna, then you're going to start with grains. And then you're going to see if you can move up. So what eats the clover, what eats the grasses, what eats the grain. And you're just going to go straight up the first time. So go ahead and you and the person next to you can problem solve together what three... I'm so sorry, I will tell you what I want you to do. What three chains would look like. So try to take them straight up. All right, I will be back in a minute. All right, so you were supposed to start with clover, grasses, and grains at the bottom. What was the next layer you put? So who eats clover? Cottontail rabbit. I'm going to put a cottontail rabbit right above the clover. Well, I want you to just look and listen, and then we'll, we'll figure out for sure what we want to do at the end. So here's my cottontail rabbit above that. Who eats a cottontail rabbit? Red fox can eat a cottontail rabbit. Who eats grasses? Okay. Grasshopper. And who eats the grasshopper? Blue jay. Then field mouse eats the grains. Then what? It could be the red fox. Who else would eat an owl, though? Or a uh, mouse. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Forget it. Mr. Okex would eat the mouse. Would eat Poppy. You are right. Now, here is the next piece. Now it says, shh. Then it says, when we've got three chains, we're going to blend the chains together to create a food web. So our food web starts with everything at the bottom layer needs the what? Everything at the bottom layer is going to need the sun. So I'm going to put the sun underneath. All right, so then if you look at your wording this is what my wording says my wording says the sun provides the energy producers need to perform photosynthesis then the sun the clover can grow from the sun the grasses can grow from the sun and the grains can grow from the sun agreed so if i find the clover it says a clover is a producer that gets energy from the sun to produce sugar through photosynthesis if I get the 
grains, it says grains are producers that get energy from the sun to produce sugar through photosynthesis. Then the last one says grasses are producers that get energy from the sun to produce sugar through photosynthesis. Now here's where my next layer starts to get tricky. The cottontail rabbit is a primary consumer that gets its energy from clover or grasses to grow and move. So now I have the cottontail rabbit and it gets its energy through either grasses or clover. The next one says a field mouse is a primary consumer. Let me move my paper over a little bit. Hang on. Field mouse is a primary consumer that gets its energy from grasses or grains. Okay. So can I get, so grasses and grains would both go to the field mouse, right? Yep. Then we have a grasshopper as a primary consumer that gets energy from grasses or grains, grasses or grains, to move and grow. Now, the barred owl is a secondary consumer. It gets its energy from mice or... No? Look at it. What does it say? Uh, barred owl is a secondary consumer. It gets its energy from mice or birds. So I might want to sneak my blue jay down a little bit and my barred owl up a little bit because it comes from two different things. A blue jay gets is a secondary and sometimes primary consumer that uses energy from grains or insects, which would be our grasshopper. So could I draw an arrow from the grains and grasshoppers to the blue jay? Yeah, that would work. My last one says this. The red fox is a secondary and sometimes terrary ter consumer that gets its energy from rabbits, birds. So here's the rabbit. Here's the birds or mice to grow and move. So I might want to have this one a little bit above, but I might want to see if I can get my red fox to kind of be the king of the king of the kingdom, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to super carefully get out my glue stick and I'm going to use my double sticky tape. Well, the biggest thing is that when you, the question is, does it have to be the same as mine? You are not using tape. Miss Richardson is the queen of double sticky tape. You are going to be the kings and queens of glue sticks. Uh, the biggest thing is, is you're going to have to be able to draw the arrows to show the way it goes. You will either need a white crayon or a white colored pencil. All right, so what did we know? We know the sun provides the energy producers need to perform photosynthesis. Who are my producers I need to draw arrows to? So I'm going to draw an arrow from the sun to the grains. I'm going to draw an arrow from the sun to the grasses. And then I'm going to draw an arrow from the sun to the clover. Okay. That white. Then let's look at the next row. The cottontail is a primary consumer that gets energy from Clover or grasses. So I need to draw 
to the cotton to L rabbit, I need to go from clover to the cotton tail and grasses to the cotton tail. So then I'm moving on. So I'm going to the grasshopper. So the I've done my arrows here. Now I have grasshopper. Grasshopper is a primary consumer that gets its energy from grasses or grains. So I need to move, make an arrow from the grasses to the grasshopper and from the grains to the grasshopper. Then I need to read the field mouse. And I had to get a little creative with field mouse because I was running out of room. So it says a field mouse is a primary consumer that gets eaten, that gets energy, sorry, from grasses or grains to move, grow and move. So from the field, from the grasses, I'm going to go to the field mouse. And then I'm going to go from the grains to the field mouse. Then a barred owl is a secondary consumer that gets its energy from mice or birds to grow and move. So mice and then I need to draw an arrow from the blue jay which is a bird. Okay. Now the blue jay is kind of hanging out here because we don't know how the blue jay eats. A blue jay is a secondary and sometimes primary consumer that uses energy from grains or insects. So I got to take grasshoppers, my insect, to the blue jay. But then I got to take one all the way from grains. Grains to blue jay. Yep, grasshopper is an insect. Okay, a red fox is a secondary and sometimes terrary consumer that gets its energy from rabbits or mice or birds. So I'm going to take my rabbit to my red fox. Rabbits, mice, Well, or birds. Now, I kind of wonder, do you think that the barred owl is included in that as well? Do you think an, a fox would eat a barred owl? No. Yes. So, yes, foxes will eat owls. So I need to draw an arrow from the owl. To the fox. The size depends on the hunting season. It will eat owls. Hunting season and what is available. Foxes will hunt and eat owls. Now that I've drawn all my arrows, I'm going to put my name in the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to give you the next set of directions. Make sure you write it in a na in a color I can see. Now, we are going to go back to the original question that we started with the other day. And the original question is, where do animals or consumers get the energy they need to fulfill all the characteristics of living things? So, on an index card, it, we're going to write down, I'm going to write the question on mine, where 
do animals consumers get the energy hold you don't have a card yet get the energy they need to fulfill all of the characteristics of living things. So, now that you know the food web and you understand the food web and how it's set up, how do animals or consumers get the energy they need to fulfill all of the characteristics of living things? If you are a Red fox on here. How do you get the energy you need to fulfill the characteristics of living things? And remember they said every time you go up a step, you only get about 10% of the energy. So, cottontail rabbits, grasshoppers, and field mice get 10% of the energy they need from the food they, they eat. So if they eat a pound of food, they only get 10% of the pound of food they eat a day. Then, we blue jays, if they eat these, they get 10% of the energy of that. But if a blue jay eats the grasshopper, it only gets 10% of the energy that the grasshopper got from the grasses it ate. So the higher up the food chain, the more food you have to eat. If you eat a lot of salads and a lot of vegetables, you have to eat less salad and less vegetables to get the energy you need. If you spend your time eating bacon, mm, bacon, you only get 10% of the energy from the pig, and the pig only got 10% of the energy that it ate off the grasses or the grains or the whatever the pig ate. So... Where do animals or consumers get the energy they need to fulfill all the characteristics of living things? So, what? Well, if you're eating a burger, you get 10% of the energy from the burger. And the cow only got 10% of the energy from the grasses it ate. And then, and then the, you know, and so the problem is, is that in order for us to get the same amount of energy that the cow gets, we have from the cow, we have to eat a lot more cow to get the same amount of energy. All right, so you are going to give me two to three sentences. Where do animals or consumers get the energy they need to fulfill all of the characteristics of living things? I want two to three sentences. Nope. But you have to answer the question. So it's going to be complete sentences. What you are going to do is when you are done, you are going to turn in your black poster and you are going to put your answer on the back. Uh, you can glue it if you can get your two, whole two to three sentences on the front side. They're a bigger index card. If you cannot get your whole two to three sentences on the front side, you're just going to have to tape it at the top so I can flip it over and read the back side. Does that make sense? Any questions on my expectation? This is going to be due when? Thursday. Tomorrow. And remember your mouth poster? is due today, because today is Tuesday.
the one where you were eating something and then the something that was in your mouth was eating something, most people turn in. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.